I don't sound like you. My voice is a unique characteristic of me. But is that the same with all other animals? Specifically, lions. Can you tell them apart by just using their roars? On this episode of the Oxford Sparks Big Questions podcast, we are heading into the wild and we are asking, do all lions sound the same? Hello, I'm Emily Elias, and this is the show where we seek out the brightest minds at the University of Oxford, and we ask them the big questions. And for this one, we've managed to find a researcher who has spent the past 10 years getting close to lions, maybe too close. So my name is Matthew Vayers. I am a zoologist. And I've been working with Wild Crew for the past couple of years, looking at lion behavior and also trying to incorporate new technology and trying to understand how we can apply these new technologies uh, to understanding more about specifically lion vocal behavior. Matthew has spent a lot of time in the field watching lions, but watching has its limits. Obviously, lions are vocal. They make noise to communicate. So Matthew thought, hey, let's add an extra element to surveillance and start recording their audio. So there are two reasons for this. The first point from a biological perspective is that it'd be really interesting to understand how individual lions are able to recognize the calls of their neighbors and companions, because we already know they can do this. And we also know that long distance communication is a really important part of lion social behavior. So if we can figure out how they convey this identity information to other individuals in their calls, then we can begin to understand how this uh, communication might have evolved over time. And then secondly, from a practical point of view, it's really important that we monitor lion populations effectively. Their numbers are declining across much of Africa. So if we can identify a lion by its roar, we can potentially design a system that can monitor lions automatically. So in theory, this sounds like a really cool idea, but how do you make it work in practice? This, I mean, this doesn't sound easy. No, so this was really difficult. Initially, we tried to record the roars manually. We went out into the field with a special microphone and recorder and followed individual lions around, hoping that they would roar for us. But Often they didn't cooperate, and so it was impossible for us to collect the data we needed using that method. So we ended up uh, forming a partnership with the computer science department at Oxford. They designed a special device for us, which um, we could attach to a lion collar. And this device recorded audio and movement data so that we could basically get a continuous recording of a lion's life for about a week. And this allowed us to collect this really big data set of roars that we could use for our analysis. So Matthew and his team took it to the field. And they were studying a group of lions in Zimbabwe in the Bumbai Valley Conservancy. And they managed to get their fancy schmancy new collars on a pride of lions. So we fitted these devices to eight lions in Zimbabwe, five males and three females. Unfortunately, the females didn't roar. Uh, We think this is because they had uh, cubs at the time and were reluctant to give away their position to potentially challenging males that might want to come in and kill the cubs. But we still recorded close to 300 roars from the the male lions. So that was a huge data set and was perfect for what we needed to do the analysis. To get those 300 roars, Matthew had to wade through 60 days of audio. That is 1,440 hours. And as somebody who works in audio, let me just tell you, the idea of wading through that amount of tape literally gives me a stress headache. Microphones were recording continuously. So we got lots of other sounds on them, like, you know, the the lions uh, walking, feeding, drinking, all those kind of things. And actually, lions don't roar that frequently at all, and also only at night. And so that meant manually 
going through all of the the days and trying to pick out the individual lion roars and then label them according to individual identity um and so it was a really long process and and also really kind of repetitive so uh it it took a a lot of efforts and time but uh, at the end we were able to get this really uh, useful data set to to answer this question so my familiarity with lion roars mainly come from the start of mgm films can you take me through the anatomy of a roar sure let's do that Okay, so a, a typical lion roar is, is uh, delivered in a bout. Firstly, it, it starts off with these kind of soft moans, perhaps one or two, uh, and then it progresses into these really loud, uh, full-throated roars. And then finishes off with these kind of sequence of, of short grunts. Um, and you can actually hear in the background, there's another individual calling as well. I did not pick that up at all. In fact, the whole lion roar, uh, when you're up close to it, it really rattles your body and your bones. It's an incredible sound. Now, Matthew is just one person, and finding his 300 roars was hard enough. So how do you then tell them apart. Well, he went back to knock on a few doors in the computer science department to see if they could help him make a program that would do the hard work for him. We looked at these uh, recordings and um, we were trying to find if there was a unique fingerprint somewhere in it, you know, that could potentially code for the individual identity. Um, And we saw that the fundamental frequency, which is the lowest frequency of that full-throated roar I talked about, uh, had this unique shape uh, for each individual. So we thought, let's see if we can train a computer to recognize that shape and see if that feature itself is actually kind of a a distinguishing uh, piece of information. So uh, we partnered with the computer science department at Oxford University, um, and uh, Professor Andrew Markham was very helpful in this regard. He gave us Uh, lots of information and advice about how to go about kind of developing a uh, machine learning algorithm that could be trained to recognize individual lion roars um, and then also how to test it to see whether, you know, we were able to indeed recognize a specific individual from its roar. And were you able to? So when I was in the field, I thought that I was quite good at being able to recognize two individual males that were living near my house. I was fairly good at understanding, you know, which lion was roaring at the time. But I think that if I was to return there now, I would never uh, be able to remember which lion was was roaring and be able to distinguish between them. Um, And I think that's where a machine is really useful, is that you can basically set it up so that it's able to distinguish between individual roars continuously. Okay, but how hard can it really be to tell two different roars apart? Let's play a little game, shall we? Yeah, let's do that. I've asked you to send me two roars, and it's I've kind of called this game In the Roar. Eh? Okay. Puns? No. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if I can spot the difference. Um, I will play two roars, and I'm going to tell you through my absolutely trained um audio ear if roar a and roar b are this belong to the same animal so lion roar a well that's a really short one i'm gonna play it again okay lion roar b i feel like they sound like the same lion but Lion B is a bit sleepy. (laughs) That's a good way of putting it. Am I right? Or is it two different lions? I'm going to go with same lion. You are unfortunately wrong, Emily. Those are two different lions. And actually, you can hear a slight difference in the way the frequency changes over time in in the second roar. That's what's 
so amazing is that you know even for us it, it can be really difficult to tell these sounds apart but for the machine it's able to kind of track that progression and uh, is able to differentiate them quite effectively and this machine is much better than me or any human and after weeks of cooking up an algorithm to see if lions had unique voices the results were very clearly in so we found that we were able to identify individuals by their roars with approximately 91.5 percent accuracy uh, which has never been done before and i think it would be really useful using this method uh, in future because as i said before you know it it would be really valuable to have a a uh, automatic system that can identify each individual and figure out you know who is calling where and uh, also understand which lines have moved from perhaps one point to another and could that change the way that lion conservation projects work currently the way we monitor lions is is a difficult process. It re relies on these unique whisker spot patterns, unique scarring, and those are really difficult to see. Um, and also, it's a, it's a really time-consuming process. We go into the field, we capture photographs or camera traps, take pictures, and then we have to go through them all to identify them manually. But if we ident if we developed a system that could identify lions by their roars um, automatically, then it kind of reduces the amount of time a person has to spend in an office going through lots of individual pictures. Um, and yeah, ultimately we could have a machine doing the whole thing. And uh, also the other benefit of, of doing it with roars is that a roar can travel for you know up to eight kilometers from the animal. So you're not limited to this really small area of detection you can potentially de uh, detect a lion from really far away. And so I think that going forward, you know, obviously there's still a lot more work to do. We could end up with a, a really uh, an effective system that can uh, monitor lions automatically and, and really effectively. There's obviously still a lot of work that Matthew and his team need to perfect, but maybe in the not so distant future, a lion's roar could literally become their calling card. This podcast was brought to you by Oxford Sparks from the University of Oxford with music by John Lyons and a special thanks to Matthew Vayers and the folks at Wild Crew who are working on a lot of really neat conservation projects. So you should go check that out. And while you're on the internet checking that out, you should also go check out our website, oxfordsparks.ox.ac.uk, or find us on any of your social media hangout places at Oxford Sparks. Just search for us. We're there. We're cool. I'm Emily Elias. Bye for now.